It's my pleasure to introduce our next presenter, Grace Araj. She is an architecture student at the University of Oregon, and her presentation is, We Are All Refugees, Architecture in Crisis and Peace in Service of Refugees and Their Host Communities. Welcome, Grace. Imagine you lost the keys to your house. Not a problem, right? What if you were not to find them again? Everything you own, places you've loved, people you knew, everything is gone. All what you have is what you're wearing, and maybe your children. There's a lot of refugees in this world. You might think they have a place to go or someone able to help. Most of the cases, there's not. You're also probably familiar with the situation of Syrian refugees in Lebanon. Lebanon, a neighboring country, has the highest rate of refugees per capita, and that's a lot for a country as big as Connecticut with four million people living in there and one million additional refugees. Government and communities are reluctant to provide humanitarian aid and are torn between that and the economic burden. In this situation, who do you think is the victim? Of course, refugees are, but host, host communities are as well. This is why, in my research, even looking at architecture, I tried to find solutions to benefit both sides. I started looking at the work of humanitarian organizations, did interviews with photographers who work there, I also benefited from lessons I learned before in my work with communities in Haiti, Portland, and Japan, and I applied that to my research. Also, being born and raised in Lebanon, and I came here for my studies, living and transitioning in two words, I was able to access information in three languages, and sometimes these information, information are contradictory, and that's very beneficial to have different perspectives. So I'll share with you the outcome of my research. For example, Rather than giving refugees temporary tents to live in, and they will turn later into slums, we can help them build something local. We can also benefit from free energy, and free electric is like an amazing solution for that. Instead of giving them handouts, we can empower them through training them through activities. One example that could work in Lebanon is agroforestry, which is a great sustainable way for agriculture in Lebanon. Do you have any idea how much the lifespan of a refugee camp is? Any takers? <laughs> it's 17 years. So if a child is born into that refugee camp, he wouldn't leave before he's at the age where he's supposed to get education and give back to his community. If we don't build good educational spaces, that's very unlikely to happen. Now, why this is important? Of course, I did take a very particular case, which is Lebanon, to apply it to a global problem. But that comes from my belief that even through local solutions, we can help solve global problems. And this is why it's um, important. In a sense, we are all refugees of the future. It could be climate change or it could be human failure. And my research, although it doesn't involve, involve any microscope, it still helps the, the humanity to live in a better life. And this is why, winner or not, I'm here with you today to share the knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> 